Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome along to this week's episode of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby. I think we're going to call it a very special episode this week because sport often for most people is a bit of an escape from everyday life. But on this week's show, that escape is, I think, bigger than any of us can possibly imagine because we have got joining us two stars of the Ukrainian rugby team and their team manager for a fascinating conversation. Hask is alongside. Hello, Alex. Welcome along to you. I think we're going to sort of... Well, we're going to put our grown-up shoes on today and try and do something a little bit different. There are obviously big stories around the sport, as you know, but there are bigger stories in the context of everyday life, and that's what we're going to tap into. Just to remind everyone, I know you know the details by now, but Russia invaded Ukraine a little over 16 months ago, excuse me, and since then... The, the, the war has raged. Ground has been lost. It's been gained. There are still great swathes of Ukraine that are occupied by Russian and pro-Russian forces and hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost. And of course, millions of people have had their lives impacted. Incredibly, though, with the war on their doorstep, sport of sorts has continued uh, for Ukrainians. The football team narrowly lost out to Wales for a spot at the Qatar 2022 Football World Cup. Alexander Yusik won and retained his world title belts against Anthony Joshua. And the rugby team, the Cossacks, have continued to play with distinction in the Rugby Europe Trophy. And joining us today, therefore, it's a great pleasure to have with us the team manager of the Cossacks, Maxim Kravchenko, scrum half Vadim Sivak, and number 10, Anton Shashiro. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to dial into to GBR. It's great to have you with us and, and humbling and fascinating in equal measure. Um, first of all, I just want to start with a sort of generic, how are you and, and how is life? I'm going to come to you first of all, uh, Maxim. Tell us a little bit about what the last 12 months has, has involved for you and where you are right now. Now at this moment, hello. Uh, uh, at this moment, I am in Ukraine in uh, my uh, city Kharkiv. It's near. It's about 40 kilometers before the border with Russia. Uh, I came back uh, home with my family, with my wife and uh, little kid, um, and now I'm stay here and. Uh, uh, we uh, about a year we spend uh, in many parts of Ukraine. Uh, in winter, I was in Spain for the for three months. But now, when it's uh, start to be possible live in Kharkiv, I came back home and I want to stay here and uh, work with uh, my rugby club in Kharkiv and uh, prepare the guys to the championship, which will start it 6th of May in Ukraine, 7th. Uh, uh, so that's my little history about last year. Uh, it was the first, uh, first days of war. It was really terrible because we woke up uh, 24th of February last year, and uh, it was really like... Uh, Tragedy like uh, Second World War, which we, we were uh, saw in uh, films uh, or uh, read in books, it's terrible. It was terrible. I have little kids which we which have two years old, um, and uh, it was four in the morning. Uh, everywhere, everywhere, uh, the sky was red. Uh, it was. It's terrible. I, I don't. I don't have words to. To explain you the situation, I take my wife, take my kids, uh, and uh, mother, uh, and goes to my friend. Uh, he have big house with uh, uh, with big uh, tunnel. I don't know how to tell. And we sit here about a week without uh, electrics. Uh, it was hard, really hard. But then I uh, make a decision to take family and uh, goes to the west of, of Ukraine in ivano frankivsk uh, I was in ivano frankivsk about about five months and then goes then goes to Kiev spent uh, two months in Kiev but when start bombing Kiev, Kiev I take my family and uh, take the goes they goes to Europe uh, I we have we have the games of the national team in Croatia, and I didn't leave my wife and kid in Ukraine. I take them with me, and then they uh, goes to from Croatia. They goes to Spain, 
and I back to Ukraine do some something uh, some 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 job and uh, goes to them for for a few months and now I back at home in Ukraine and will stay here. That's my little history about. It's extraordinary. I mean, what what we get the sense of just from your first answer is the extraordinary turbulence that that individuals such as yourself has had to go through. I obviously want to bring in the other two in a moment, but. Can you just tell me, Maxim, from your perspective now, do you feel the war every day? Is it all around you? Do you hear from friends and colleagues that you know on the front line consistently? Or does it feel like there's a bit of distance between everyday life in Ukraine and what is happening on the front line? Tell you with the truth, uh, in Kharkiv, uh, life, uh, the city start living, really start living before the, the, after a long period uh, real war. Now many people go, go comes back to Kharkiv, uh, but sometimes uh, maybe once uh, for two weeks or three weeks uh, they bomb in us. But uh, uh, tell you the truth that. <laughs> Uh, Kharkiv start living and uh, I think will be everything will be good for for some not not long period uh, uh, many many soldiers yes in our city we know that uh, uh, now we prepare I think really our army prepare uh, prepared for if Russia wants to attack us, they, they will not go like they do a year ago. That's why I came with my family home. Only one problem is that they, sometimes they, they bomb in us. Wow. I mean, it's an extraordinary... Well, it's an extraordinary conversation for us to be having. We talk a lot of nonsense, and, and it's a pretty shambolic show, as we say. I mean, a conversation of this magnitude, it sort of it puts a lot of things in perspective. Vadim, let me ask you about you and, and I suppose, the last year for you. So Melaninsky, if, if I've pronounced that correctly, is, is home for you. 200, 200 miles southwest of Kiev, is that right? Tell me what the last year has been like for you personally. So Vadim Melaninsky... Um... Khmelnytsky is situated uh, next to 300 kilometers from Kiev, if you know. Uh, so my previous year was uh, almost the same uh, like in Maxim, but I live a little bit far, around, uh, a little bit far from war, but I feel the war uh, almost every day now, and because Russia is bombing us uh, almost every day, night, day, it doesn't matter. Uh, first days, um, first days of war, I remember it. I can't forget it any any time because it's what we were terrified. We didn't know what to sh what should we do. We didn't know about war or anything. It's so difficult to understand what we felt because the war we have never felt it before. Uh, but the first months of uh, war, we just uh, were in our hometowns and just um, trying to help our army, uh, trying to trying to struggling with uh, rockets, uh, with Russian drones, with uh, explosions because it was every day, and it's so uh, it's awful. If to be honest, it's awful. So when, for example, now when we were in Croatia, I just saw the peace sky. I just saw the travel planes in the sky, in the peace sky. It, it's my opinion. It's the was the most wonderful and excited things uh, thing that that we can see. Just peace. Not not war. In terms of your daily life, um, you know, because obviously we we're, we're only picking up stuff that we see on, on the news but in terms of food and supplies and general life um are, is have you noticed a massive difference are you know are shops empty are you getting all the things you need or is it life completely different because obviously i know you're f far away from the fighting but all the the stuff that i see in the media is just beautiful cities just destroyed rubble like trench warfare like awful things that you don't think you're going to see in in 2023 so i wondered what, what what's day-to-day -day life like for you at the moment do you really feel it not just obviously the fact that people are losing their lives but supplies and food and drink uh, james you know 
so difficult to add something about this topic, uh, but uh, we we are not used to with war, but we are used to live in war. We are used to everyday bombing, but um, if, for example, uh, some some explosions is in uh, two hundred kilometers from my city, I feel it like uh, like the same, like it it. Uh, Sit, it is next to me. So about shops, for example, the first months of uh, invasion of of Russian invasion, shops was empty. Uh, even in our, even in my city, uh, I don't know what's happened. What's what was going on in the front line in the Donetsk, in the Mariupol, in the Berdyansk, in the Kharkiv. I don't know. I I wasn't there, but in my city. Almost the same situation. Lots of, lots of people who came, who came from another cities, and lots of uh, confused, um, confused faces uh, in our city. So I, I don't know what to add more. It's awesome. It's awesome. What we're getting a sense of here is just the utter sort of. I suppose, just the, the, the desperate nature of all of it. Anton, if I can bring you in here, tell me a little bit about the role of your brother and where he's at in... in I, I understand he's, he's preparing or he's he has been fighting already on the front line? He he wasn't. He wasn't fighting already. Now he's preparing. He's in educated center, prepared center where he will be for 45, 60 days. And after that, he will be somewhere on the front line. Uh, we, we don't know where, we don't know. And what is he telling you about life in that center and the, 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 the people he's with and the, the general training he's getting and the general attitude to, to the job he's got to go and do? Life in Kyiv, it's, it's normal life now. All people, all people live in their lives. They know that in every moment bump can, can explode and you will die. So everyone's live like last day every day like last day in their lives and people do everything they do whatever they want we don't know what to expect tomorrow and we don't know what we, what it will be i don't know how how to feel that because i wasn't in ukraine for for this past years and uh, it's it's hard to explain explain me what people feel now but when when war started uh, i called for for a few weeks for two weeks first two weeks i called every 15 minutes to my family ask them what what's going on because i i don't even understand what is going on. it was a lot of propaganda in the internet a lot of since the a lot of fakes that russia russia right that odessa is already is already in russia that kiev is already in russia they wrote a lot of you... shit and it was it was hard to understand what's yeah. going on. Anton, were you, were you in Georgia over the last year or so? And, and tell me about watching what's happened in your country from afar, how hard that's been. It was very hard. When it started, I wanted I wanted to move to Ukraine, but uh, my brother told me that I should stay in Europe and in this way I can help okay. my family. Maxim, if I can bring you back in. We hear a lot, we read a lot in the newspapers, but as you say, there's a lot of noise, of a propaganda, some will say, from Russia. W do, do you feel Ukraine are winning this war? What, what is the general sense of how the war is going in Ukraine? To tell you the truth, uh, I think that we started, uh, if uh, the first, uh, first uh, half a year of the war, uh, we think in that... Uh, it's hard, but, but uh, that uh, that uh, they take uh, they take our territory for for the river Dnieper. I, I think it, uh, a lot of people thinking about it because it was uh, terrible. But now now I know that uh, we um, our army do their best, and uh, they are really here Ukrainian heroes. They they do the things that. Uh, I can't understand in my head because uh, it was uh, Russia have really big army and uh, our our soldiers have I don't know how to how to tell the, I think uh, uh, 
uh, we just win this war this war and no uh, we're waiting for uh for attack of ukrainian army which will be i think two or three weeks uh later and uh, when when ukrainian army do do it i think will be better and uh, we will understand what uh, that war is finished or not finished this year I was I was in Florida last week and I had a uh, I met a Ukrainian guy and I was talking to him and his best friend was a Russian guy and obviously in Ukraine Russians and Ukrainians are very close t together obviously a lot of people in Russia don't support that support the war at all have you have you found that you, you've got Russian friends and you know kind of how that's been what that's been like in terms of that relationship with people and and that kind of vibe so, you know, you know, before the war, perhaps uh, somebody has uh, Russian relatives, Russian friends from Russia, uh, but after 24 of February, uh, everything has changed and we cannot, uh, we cannot have any uh, relationship with Russian people. Uh, it's 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 awful for us because russia is killing us we, we don't have we don't have we don't have friends in russia no no, no one have friends even even uh, brothers and sisters quarreled and don't speak uh, we finish with them they, because people which support to ukraine in russia have to go to the streets and to tell something about this war no one do nothing they we support ukraine but we don't do nothing we don't understand this support we understand that you bombing us Probably abroad, a Russian and Ukrainian, probably, we don't know uh, how it be, uh, probably be together, be friends, uh, be relatives or something like that. But inside our country, um, it's dangerous, it's, uh, it's, it's impossible. Is, is there a big, um, big segregation now? Because obviously some parts of um, Ukraine were pro-Russian and some, some weren't. Do you see it in the in the in the streets now that you know there'll be Russians there and you there's a big there's a big separation of, you know people that were you know were originally your neighbours and now that's that's it we've completely finished speaking to them. No Russian here, uh, no Russian. Probably on the occupied territory when uh, Russia is now, uh, probably somebody wants to be in Russia, but in our territory, in our cities, in our Ukrainian cities, no Russia at all. Any, any time for many many uh, years for we, we we don't we don't have brothers uh, friends in russia for for hundred and hundred years right, okay tell you with the truth no i just i just wondered because i, I knew obviously in some you know in, in, in every country there are different people and i knew obviously because before the war there were some pro-russian parts obviously there would be russians there i just wondered whether um you know they were you know, you sort of still had a relationship. But you're saying basically, no, that's it. No more Done. friends are Russian. Don't speak to anyone, and that's and that's the end of it. Which you know is, is obviously I, as I would imagine. After 24 of February, we don't have friends. Before the war, Kharkiv was uh, everyone in Ukraine tells that Kharkiv is a Russian city, with, because in Kharkiv uh, it's near the Russian border. We tell you with the truth, we speak. Uh, 80% uh, of the city speaks uh, Russian uh, language, uh, and uh, we have big uh, 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 economic uh, with no, a lot, uh, we have a lot of connection with Russian people. But now I know one thing that uh, never I will speak with Russian people like with a friend or like with brothers. Can I ask you, Anton, what you've made of the support from around the world for the U Ukrainian situation? So I know Biden has visited and Sunak and Macron, etc., have all been to Kiev and they've met with Vladimir Zelensky. I I'm interested to know from all three of you, but, but for you, Anton, first of all, what that support from the, the, global, uh, the global support has meant to you? I think that without that support, we not win this war because all all world support us all biggest countries support us everyone support us and without this it's no way to win country like russia because 
they have a lot of people, they have a lot of money from their gold, their oil, gas and all that stuff. And for us, it's very important that Biden, Macron, uh, Johnson, you know know who is this? Boris Johnson, he he is, I think in uh, after the war, in every city will be street (laughs) <laughs> by uh, street street name Boris Johnson. There aren't there aren't many in the no, UK no. named after Bon Boris Johnson, so I'm glad somewhere's giving yeah, him some love and support. We try to forget we had Boris Johnson, <laughs> but I'm glad he I'm glad he did something for you. Can I ask? So, yeah. so Anton, can I just ask? With you said um, earlier about kind of the the propaganda, right? So obviously, um, if you from what I believe, if you live in, live in Russia and you see what they are talking about on on their on their TV and what they say, obviously we. In, in England, you know, our media is, is not really controlled. We're able to see, hopefully, both sides of the of the story. You're you're not in uh, Ukraine. Are you seeing um, just a, a completely different picture in the media to what, say, um, a, you know, uh, Vanderman uh, would, would tell you on the phone, or like, is it completely different? Or what you know, do you see a lot of propaganda out there? Is it a lot of bullshit, or is it quite clear? Because at the moment, it's very hard to know. What's, what's true? true, what's not true. Like Russia say they've done this, Ukrainians say they've done that. It's very hard for us to know what, what the truth is. I just wondered what your image of, of the war is and, what, and how much truth to the media there is. Yeah, in, in Georgia, I'm not, I'm not watching. I'm not watching TV. I'm not watching that stuff because in TV it's 90%. It's uh, full. But the uh, place where we watch in information about war, it's in Telegram. In Telegram channel, channels, it's uh, generally it's Ukrainian main channels about the war, and uh, we I, I I watch in all information from that from that channels because when I just for joke I open open Russian Russian uh, TV Russian media any any sites <laughs> when I read something like what what they talking to their People, it's crazy. How they how they hate the people to tell so so much lie. I don't know. It's... They live, they live like in North Korea. The people, the people, they don't they don't know true. They don't. They think that they that they are spasayed. Как буде видим? Safe, safe, safe. They think people in Russia think that yeah. uh, their army, their army help and save Ukrainian people from Ukrainian government. It's crazy because they started war and they told that they want to help us. For what help you? Killed our children, killed our women. But James, you should know that Russia is a close country for another another world. Because, for example, when you are living in, a, in a Russia, you can, wa- you can watch, see only Russian news. And if you live in United Kingdom or Ukraine or the rest of the world, you can see uh, news uh, from, the whole, from the whole world. And you should understand where is truth or where is false. So my, my, thing, my opinion is something like that. You can analyze all the information and uh, make your decision about the situation. Russian people don't know nothing. Only, only the fucking news. Sorry, yeah, that's fine. only the news. <laughs> only, only the news, uh, and it's really nothing to yeah. tell you because everything is lying. Tell you what, we, Max. So this is the good, the bad, and the rugby. You use fuck wherever you like <laughs> yeah, in this yeah, circumstance. Yeah. Okay, we'll say forgive again. you. Say whatever you want. <laughs> I, I say, I say much worse. Thank um, you. No, because it's interesting. Because when obviously over here. You know, the news the news was on all the time. We interviewed um, a guy called James Waterhouse, who was the BBC correspondent who was in um, Ukraine when the when the war happened. He was he was on there as his first assignment, thinking that nothing was going to happen. And then obviously Russia Russia invaded. We sit here and look at the look at, and listen to the media and listen to what Putin's saying about stuff. And it's just it's like laughable bullshit. It's like the, it's just utter utter shit and it's like we can see that it's shit i just I, i'm you know i just wondered whether being out you know on the outside can you see it shit and how and how much of it is is true but you do feel like through telegram and these other sources that the truth is the truth is getting out there that it was being you know shown in the proper way yeah it's 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 sure we all understand that 
99% of that what he say it's it's bullshit because it's it's full lie. I, but I know that uh, why he why he wanted to not explore con, con, conquer Ukraine because uh, all life on that parts of Europe started from Kyiv. Kyiv was main city of Kyiv, Kyiv and Rus. And uh, Moscow was, uh, Kyiv was, как буде, як буде заснована? Kyiv was built in, was built in 800 years, but uh, Moscow was built in 1000, 1100 years. So it's 300 years of difference between Kyiv and Moscow. And they all told that Russia, it's big empires, that everything starts from Russia, that Ukraine, it's just small parts of old Russia and all that stuff. And he want to clear that uh, true in history that Ukraine was first than Russia. And that's, I think that's why he want to destroy us and take all parts of Ukraine into into the bullshit empire. Beautifully put. I was going to ask you, Maxim, Zelensky has had a huge amount of respect outside Ukraine, and a lot of people look at him and think he is a true great modern leader. What is the opinion of, of your president inside Ukraine? What do the people make of Vladimir Zelensky? I think now big part of people uh, support him, and uh, he has... People, uh, he do a lot in this war, <laughs> so I support this president, our president, and I think uh, big, most most uh, part of Ukrainian people support them. He, Interesting. He is, he is the greatest person in our, our last history. In our world, probably, now. Let me ask you about rugby, obviously, because we are a rugby show and there, there are others who are far better at the journalism uh, than we ever will be. It's been fascinating to get your, your, your personal takes on, on the situation. But, Maxim, first of all, how big a responsibility is it for the Ukrainian rugby team to offer hope and a storyline and a diversion, I suppose, from the everyday brutalities of war? How much of a responsibility did the team feel to, to create positive news right now? Oh, tell you the truth, it re it's really hard, the situation with, with the sport. Uh, uh, we, last year, we don't know what to do at all. We don't have championship. We don't have nothing. But we start, we, we, in, the, in May, we start to do something in Federation. We organize uh, camps for the seventh uh, teams, the juniors. It's about 18 years, uh, girls and uh, boys. And they uh, take uh, and they uh, played in the European Championship last year. Uh, in autumn, we find some money to organize camp for the National 15 team. And we said that we will uh, we will play uh, official games of uh, championship uh, in autumn. Uh, it was hard uh, to organize guys because many guys, some guys goes uh, to in army, some uh, don't don't train a lot. But uh, everyone knows that. Uh, they want to play for national team and uh, to show all over the world that uh, even in the war we can uh, uh, train, we can sh show some results uh, and uh, do every do their best uh, in sport, even in situation of war. And I'm I'm uh, really I want to tell thanks to my guys that they uh, er they. Um, do their best uh, in the last games and we have a good result uh, tell you the truth we have uh, second place in the, in this year uh, in, in the european championships so i think it's one of the best <laughs> the super result in our situation 
And we now now I know that we will have a camp, uh, preparing camp, uh, and World Rugby will help uh, will help us uh, in Georgia in September in September September for two weeks. Uh, it's uh, uh, guys uh, start training uh, and preparing for sevens uh, because we will. I'll tell you later that we will have a championship in sevens in fifteen. This year, I think we will not play nothing in Ukraine, but uh, we're still living and we're still playing rugby. Which is amazing. The, the main thing um, for us in Ukraine is that we still play rugby and love rugby. And we want to um, say thank you to the Croatia side that um, they host us for our uh, two previous games against Switzerland and uh, Sweden. So one of them uh, we uh, won. One of them we lost. But you should know, we're Ukrainian. We had no um, plenty of preparation. Uh, but we had a gold characters in uh, the whole of our team. And it supports us to play uh, without preparation and win. Uh, and win our, uh, win our probably future games too. Now that no, nowadays we have yes. the situation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to tell thanks uh, for Croatia Rugby Federation and the uh, director uh, Vyacheslav. We, uh, they have they give us a really good big support and help us to organize these games. Fantastic, and it's great to hear that the the rugby community has reached out. So, just for our listeners and viewers, Ukraine are in tier three of European rugby, and as you mentioned, Maxim, they finished runner up to Switzerland in the European Rugby Trophy. Pipped by Switzerland uh, on the 11th of March, but then you beat Sweden 38-15 uh, a week later on the 18th. Anton, what were the celebrations like post-match? We weren't, we wasn't celebrating the win because we all know what is going on in our country. It was like we we just we just know that we do that, and we show for our people in Ukraine that we can win not only on the pitch and we can win and. Uh, main main fight in our country and so but am i right in saying anton you, you hadn't played for ukraine since was it age group levels and i'd love to know why you've come back why have you got back into the the national setup now <laughs> because i'm i'm understand that uh country need me in, in this moment <laughs> why are you that, laughing the, yeah that i i should play for them and help them in these difficult times and how proud are you to be back in the Ukraine national jersey? I'm, I'm very proud, and uh, I think it's the best, the best feelings in my life when you came, play for your national side team, and win games. And in this time, and it's, I'm very proud that I have a chance to play for the national team. Maxim, I was going to ask. You said some of the players are have been fighting. Have you? Have you? Have you? Um, are those guys still on the on the front line, or, or have they come back to play? Uh, no, the, the guys which uh, fighting did not come to back to play. They they have rotation sometimes. Uh, someone, uh, you know, what means rotations? You you fight, then you goes back home for for some times, and then you get, goes back to the front line. Uh, the guys which start uh, goes to army. Now don't play rugby. Unfortunately, some of them was injured and um, they cannot play. Obviously, it's a difficult question. You don't have, to, but have you lost anyone? Any any of the team have, have been killed in the war? Unfortunately, we lost uh, some players. Really? We lost we lost a former president of nation of the of our federation, Alexei Tsipko, last year. Uh, we lost a doctor of national team, Alexander Maximishin. He's died last year too. Uh, we lost a lot of guys which played in clubs in Ukraine at this moment. This, this is our terrible truth of our lives. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, that's, it stops you in your tracks, yeah. really, doesn't it? All the nonsense we talk about with the game up here. I mean, you are, you are living a very different and a very stark reality. I, I just want to pick up on the pride, and Vadim, you, you might want to answer this, the pride that you have as a team and the 
the job that you have, I suppose, to, to represent your country. When you sing the national anthem and you sang the national anthem against Sweden on the 18th of March, the, 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 the team in the moments before you play an international like that, can you describe the pride and the motivation that you have? You know, some of us, when we when we start to listening to our national anthem, uh, perhaps start and crying and um, you, 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 you can start overthinking about that uh, where you, when, when you are listening to national anthem, when you see abroad Ukrainian of uh, our Ukrainian flag. So I don't know what to add. I don't know how to describe it, describe it rightly, uh, but we we played uh, we played that is the, that is the main thing that uh, we can express for, uh, for from us we played and we started uh, from small victory uh, against uh, sweden but the main victory will be against russia and nothing uh, i don't know what to what to add if, to be honest it's so uh, so awful and so hard understand that people are dying every day every every second the soldiers uh, they are over there on the front line and we we just uh, still play rugby and that's it got you can i ask you maxim it's a very hard question to answer given everything that's that's going on in your country at the moment but is is rugby and, and God, God willing, this will all be sorted out, and we'll get back to you. Will get back to a sort of more peaceful existence sooner rather than later. But is rugby a growing sport? Is it a sport that Ukrainians are enjoying and, and it's picking up? Is what, what is the sort of the health of the game at the moment? Uh, at this moment, to tell with the truth, it's not a really popular sport like soccer, like uh, boxing, in our country. But uh, I know when the war is finished. We do everything that uh, rugby will be more popular in our country, and uh, I think uh, we will be we will be uh, uh, gonna uh, and how to tell it. I don't know. I I know for one hundred percent that after the war we will make rugby for a few years much more popular in our country, and I know I know how to do it. Tell you the truth. Uh, and uh, uh, I forget one thing about our plans for for preparing national team. And uh, we have an invitation from a club uh, 100 stars of England. Uh, you have the you have the club of 100 stars uh, invite us in September in London to play the game uh, with the, with them. Do you know what we should do? Maxim? We'll come down. Uh, well, I think we should come on a good bad rugby trip to Ukraine. Yeah. Me, you, and 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 Tins will come and we'll come and do some coaching and we'll come over there and and say hello. It will be it will be we... super if uh, the uh, players and the, the coaches of your level will come to our country and uh, uh, give some maybe organize some camps. It will be the best thing. If I come now, will they name a street after me? <laughs> Next to Boris Johnson Street, yeah, you're both as yeah. popular as each other. Welcome, welcome. I'm not sure it had the same positive effect, but I would like to. I'd like to fly over. I, I'll, you know, I'll come in. I think in in, in Kharkiv, in Kharkiv, they can do it. <laughs> yeah, but can you? Are there are flights? Are airport, is the flights in and out still okay in the country or not? How are people getting in and out? No flights. And I... No, the sky is closed. Train, bus, car. Because I, I normally only fly first class, so I don't know how to use a train. <laughs> so I, but <laughs> no, I will. I can take a train, a, a train, and a bus. We should do it. Yeah. We'll go and do it. Even in the heat of war, your travel demands do not <laughs> yeah, drop. Yeah, exactly. Um, apologies. Do you do you watch the Six Nations? Will you watch the Rugby World Cup? Do you watch the Premiership? How much rugby do you watch, Vadim, from from Ukraine? Yes, we watch this, the games of the, 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 the best the best rugby in the world. So we watch it. Uh, Six Nations, yeah, always. We watch this always. I'm going to ask Vadim and then Anton, who, who are your favourite players in the game right now? You must love Dupont, Vadim. No, I, I don't like Anton Dupont. My favourite player is James Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Vassal you, and Keith, Vadim. But nowhere else. Vadim, you know so, if to be, if to be honest... Uh... I thought you were being honest, Vadim. <laughs> I thought you were being honest. That was, your, that was the truth. 
<laughs> I was, I was. <laughs> You're right. So um, I want to start. My favorite team, except Ukraine, is Wales. I know, not England. I don't like England okay. at all. Sorry, Good. James. Sorry, James. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what. I, don't I know quite why. like Russia, uh, by the way. Joking. Fuck Russia. They're assholes. <laughs> joking, joking. Sure. So, but probably it's a done bigger from Wales. It's like half from Wales. The my, my of the best. Ireland Sexton for me. Ireland uh, Sexton for you, Maxim. Anton? When I was young, it was uh, Johnny Wilkinson and Dan Carter. But now, now yeah. it's Farrell, Barrett, Sexton. As every one of them is great, it's great dance. I can I cannot choose only one. One have big food. Adam, what? Why? Why Wales? Like who? Who? Who in the Welsh squad do you like? I don't know. I I don't know rightly, but probably style of uh, playing the games. Probably diff- different, different boys, uh, strong, strong wingers. I don't know why, but uh, probably because because of my um, favorite color is red. <laughs> probably something like that. <laughs> <laughs> as good a reason as any. Yeah. As good a reason as any. Tell me what your hopes are, Vadim, for, for for Ukraine. You know, what would you like to achieve? in your playing career from this point? Would you like to play overseas? Would you like look to try and get a professional contract somewhere? You know, maybe UK, something like that. What would you like to do with your career from here? So uh, for me, I don't know what to say, but I know that my friend Anton Shashara, he is here, uh, want to, wanted to ask you about uh, England, different camp for him, because now he's playing in Georgia and uh, he's, he was... Uh, he's be better. He wanted to be better and growing up his skills. And uh, Anton wanted wanted to play in England, James. <laughs> now he is my agent. Uh, he's your agent. Yeah. He's on twenty five percent. I've got your show reel, Anton. So we'll put it on our good bad rugby social media and see if we can get a bit of interest for you. But would you like to play professionally? Would you travel if a contract was was available? Yeah, I will. I, now, now I'm in professional team. It's, Where, and you're, you're playing in Georgia, is that yeah, right? Yeah, in Batumi. It's Georgian champions, champions team. All guys. Got are, you. All guys professional. And are you happy there, or would you like to try France or England? I, or? I'm happy, but I, I want I, I want to play in France, maybe in, in England, because it's other it's other rugby there. It's different, different, uh, different rugby. But when <laughs> when I send my CVs every, I send CV everywhere, and when someone sees it, uh, that player from Ukraine, it's no way to play somewhere because if you're from Ukraine, they think that you don't play rugby. You play maybe football, maybe boxing, but you are not rugby player, and it's, it's very difficult to to find a club in in the in the highest level in Europe. Anton, well, I was going to say, we know Steve Borthwick quite well. Maybe we'll ask if you can come over for a, a, a train with the England team one day. Yeah, I, that'd you be know. amazing. Yeah. That'd be a brilliant we'll story. Come and, do, come, and do a, come and do a session, because sometimes they do, you know, because we, we used to train against all, all sorts of different people. Yeah. Maybe you come in. As your, as your agent, Anton, I, I won't charge you, <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I will see if we can speak to Steve Borthwick so we can get, you know, that'd come and do a thing during the, um, the World Cup World stuff. Cup warm-ups. Yeah, World Cup warm-ups. Yeah, yeah. that'd be amazing. Um, gents, it's it's a, this is a f- genuinely a fascinating fascinating conversation. I want to just finish with with a few quick questions. We obviously watched Usyk a lot, particularly with uh, with his fights with uh, Anthony Joshua. I mean, just tell us in terms of inspiring sporting figures, Maxim, what Alexander Usyk has has done for you know the morale in Ukraine as uh, in his feats in the boxing ring. He's doing a lot. This 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 is our hero. He do a lot like a sportsman. He do a lot like a people of Ukraine because he he donate money, big money to army and uh, helps people uh, which uh, have have no home, uh, which uh, uh, homes are destroyed. Uh, he do a lot, and this is he's really our hero. And I think uh, 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 he and he is the best uh, boxer in the world for for me. And now it was uh, uh, your uh, 
your boxer uh, which don't want to fight with him. Uh, Fury, Fury. Yes, 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 all time, all time combinate yeah. something, something. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that he he's really not preparing for this fighting, and that, that's why he all time something says many, many, a lot of things that not to fight. Because you, you guys, you had, you had the Klitschkos, that's right as well. You had yeah. the Klitschkos and Lomachenko, Lomachenko, is that right as well? Yes. Yeah, look, those guys, I mean, now, why, why is it, why do Ukraine make such good boxes? Is it just because you're tough, tough men Hard and man. that's what you like, yeah? Or is it, well, why is it so popular? Because you've got a, an amazing history with, with boxing in particular. <laughs> because you you will you will not live normally in Ukraine if you're not boxing. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, have to box. <laughs> you have you have to fight for your life. <laughs> because because because, wonder, wonder because we is, have you know. crazy neighbors, so we have to be always prepared to to, <laughs> to kick to kick the asses. Crazy neighbors. Yeah, I like it. No, I because really, I, I I wonder it's sort of in 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 the in the UK we kind of you know we're teaching children at schools now that. You know, it's not about winning; it's about taking part, and we're breeding a whole generation of soft men. Yet we, it's nice to see in uh, in Ukraine that you're all <laughs> everyone's ready to fight at all times. I love that. Oh, you know, Alex is a boxer, by the way, as well. Yeah, I'm not boxing in Ukraine. I well, can tell I think, you that yeah. for free. Yeah. yeah. In, in, Alex, which, Alex, in which way? <laughs> Alex, yeah, in which yeah. way? Um, Bantam weight. <laughs> Thank you, Anton. Thank <laughs> you. Your England contract just been ripped up. I'm afraid. <laughs> No, Alex, 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 uh, out of all of us, he's had one fight and one win. Alex won in boxing. Yeah, it's all you need. One, one, fight, one fight, one uh, one fight, one win, and then you can retire. That's me done and, and out. Tell us, uh, and I'll ask each of you this, how can the rest of the world ha help Ukrainian rugby right now? What could we do as good, bad rugby? What can our listeners do that would help you, sort of, Vadim, I suppose, in some of the challenges you've got? We think that the rest of the world... Firstly, should support our army uh, by the tanks, um, aircrafts, and another probably missile. But sport, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know, uh, sport is on a second place now after the war. And we want to say thank you to the United Kingdom that helping us every time, every day from the first time of uh, Russia invasion. Uh, it's so important for us, and we are proud of. Um, United Kingdom people, uh, government, and um, everyone who donate, who support our army, our people, our people in United Kingdom, because lots of about ten millions uh, went of Ukraine, went from Ukraine, and to the United Kingdom too. And we had, we hadn't any uh, ways uh, to save our life abroad so lots of girls lots of uh, women women uh, left our country uh, during first or second um, weeks uh, after the russian invasion and thank you for the rest of the rest of the world that hosted us and uh, supporting everywhere where can where can we be in Ukraine, abroad, in different countries. Uh, I think that is the main thing um, nowadays and the main support uh, for us. But sport is on the second place. No, okay. now, now, we know, now we really know who's our brothers and who's the crazy neighbors. Yes, yes. yes. Keep, keep boxing and I'm definitely one of your brothers. I'm not going to yeah, be a crazy yeah, yeah. neighbor, that's for sure, given how hard you all are. Tell me, in each one of you, I'd love to hear your answer. How does this war end? When does it end? You know, how how desperate are Ukrainians to have this uh, a conclusion? You know, reached uh, and a positive one too. On, only victory for Ukraine. I am so uh, I, I know that only victory for Ukraine, but I'm not Zaluzhny, and I don't know uh, every uh, all the secrets of our uh, general. But I think he knows something how to beat this crazy dogs. Yeah, Anton. I think I think that we will push them out from our countries, from our borders, and maybe in the next year it will it will be it will be over. But I think we will we will we will fight with them for a hundred years because. All our history, they wanted to destroy Ukraine. All, all our, we was, we was 
for 150 years was a slayer. They just they just came into Ukraine and our people was slayer because they wanted to do it and it, it will be it will be for a very long time and but that's why we have to be strong that's why we have to have a strong army and i hope we will win very soon and and your brother and the training he's doing is he confident does he tell you that, that this is going to be a ukraine yeah, victory yeah, he's confident he have, he have he have a lot of friends who is already fighting and he told me that now uh, they are preparing something, something special that it will be. All world will see that stuff. Thank you so much, guys, for 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 coming on and for sharing your for sharing your story. And as I said, if you know, as Alex said, if there's anything, when life does come back to normal, um, and you need some support, rugby, whether that's equipment, whether that's whatever, then please, you know, let yeah. us know because we've got some amazing followers uh, on Good Bad Rugby who would happily help and donate in any way that we we can. And good luck. And stay safe, really. Yeah. Sounds nice. The, the, final th uh, the final thing I want to ask you is, and you can put it however you like, but I'm genuinely fascinated to sort of wrap up this conversation. Each and, each and every one of you, what's your message to Putin? Fuck him. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, do dirty, dirty, dirty dog. I don't have any words to this shit. <laughs> and Vadim? Nothing to say, boys. Sorry. And that, in many ways, sums it up. I think you've you've given us a real insight. We read a lot in the papers. We see a lot on the news. You know, it's a big story around the world right now. But to hear your views and to hear your stories has been a real privilege for us on The Good, The Bad and The Rugby. We talk a lot of nonsense. We, we focus on very trivial things. But you've given us an hour-long insight into just, a, you know, the biggest story in the world right now. And... I'm sorry that you're having to go through it. I think everybody who follows our show will want you and your country to come through this and come through it quickly and in the right way. And we wish you all the very best. As James said, stay safe, look after yourselves, and um, glory to Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you. And we want, we want from, from, our, from our side, we want to invite you when the war is finished to help us uh, uh, to to get rugby on other, to other, other level in our country. So welcome to Ukraine, we're waiting for you. We'd love to do that. I won't bring the boxing gloves. I look forward to the hospitality and hopefully the chance to celebrate with you on, on the field um, and to celebrate what you've achieved off it as well. Thank you very much indeed, gents, and look after yourselves. Thank you. Cheers, lads. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, boys. There they go. I mean, there, there are some big stories in rugby right now, and then there are some big stories, and that is an extraordinary hour and you know, elsewhere people will delve into what's going on in the current state of the game but that has been I think one of the most interesting hours that we've spent on this pod in a very very long time it's weird as well because that kind of there's that juxtaposition between talking about playing sport and then fighting for your country and losing yeah. life and sort of trying to carry on life as normal but ultimately you know people are dying and it's all around you and kind of <clears throat> you can sort of see that in, in what they're saying that you know and I think it puts everything else in perspective and that's the old cliche that everyone always says but actually it kind of makes you yeah realize that you know sport is one thing and it's important it brings people together but actually there's nothing more sort of shocking than actual life and death situations and how how profound that is and how being in war we yeah. you know, we don't know we never experienced war like that you know you see it in books you see it and everything but then the ever present danger of being bombed and attacked and bomb part of your country is being completely leveled so you can't you can't recognize it your question around relationship with people who you know in russia is the bit that really dropped because we're very fortunate in our lives we've never had a sort of no. a, just a, an out and out hatred for we're still not like the germans are we? like still that's a bit of an over over yeah, well uh, yes but it's, a, it's, it's you know, what you mean, know it's, it's a wembley chant yes, now it's yeah. not like a kind of i i despise the entire nation yeah. of and everybody within its walls and anyone that I've ever known from that part of the world is dead to me. I mean, that is, and, and it comes through in every yeah. single answer. That's the thing that's so extraordinary. You can see in three individuals yeah. why Ukraine have not rolled over. No. People thought that when Russia moved, they would take Kiev in 24 yeah. hours. You just get a sense in the eyes and the answers of the three gents linked to the Ukrainian rush, uh, rugby team why this is now still going on 16 months yeah, I mean, later. I was trying to think if, it, if that happened in the, in the UK, what, 
what what would you do? Say, you know, France tried to invade us or something or whatever. Um, you know, just fighting from city to city, going, you know, and actually the joining whole up. South Coast decimated, yeah. and like get it, but also be like picking up, you know, kissing your kids goodbye and go right. I'm off to yeah. war now. Not really knowing a lot about how to fight. I mean, I know that they're. It's interesting that he, Anton's brother's being trained. Yeah. Um. I just thought they just gave you. I mean, on the initial opening days of the war, they would just hand over a gun and just walk off and do what you do what you're going to do. But obviously, I imagine it's probably a bit more of a hindrance than a help. Yeah. You are armed with an AK-47 with your little spit spaghetti arms just firing everywhere, shooting everyone, <laughs> shooting everyone, getting panicked. Sure they need shot. My help in probably, that you probably get, it's probably more more dangerous. So uh, I'm glad that they're getting some training. But I I do find it very. Like I said to Chloe the other day, we were talking about so what what would you do? And, she, and you know, I said I, I'd think I'd have to go and fight. Um, and I think also the thing is that because we live in a world now where we, you aren't exposed to that level of stuff, and we live in quite a nice bubble in most yeah. of our areas. And to, you know, when you actually see an accident first hand, hand, or you get to see someone get hit by a car, or if you go to war and you see someone die, someone blown up, it all, in your mind it's all like video games, it's like action movies. Yeah. The reality of all that stuff is horrific. Yeah. Horrific, horrific, horrific. And the stuff I I follow a few Instagram accounts on. Um, uh, the, the, on, on on Instagram that show war uh, war bits from the Ukraine and they're 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 tr they're fighting in trenches like legitimate trench warfare you know you're two feet away from me and I'm shooting over the top of you and throwing grenades and like it's it's the most horrific thing I think I've ever seen um, and I've, luckily because Instagram won't show it you don't see the actual death part but there was one with a guy with a, a Ukrainian soldier these Russians asked him to surrender old guy and he just said glory to Ukraine they just machine gun him. And so obviously that allow both sides, I'm sure that that happens, but it's just really quite shocking to watch what we thought was was consigned to World War, you know, World War One, yeah. past World War Two, the trench warfare Band was of done. Brothers, as yeah. Kind of, yeah. This, this, this is honestly like that. It's like it's it's in, in like the Band of Brothers exactly when they're in that wood and there's splintered trees, they get shelled and shelled and yeah. shelled. There's just this landscape of trenches, just everything is fucking splintered, mud, shit everywhere, and they're fighting hand to hand. They're fighting. You know, and it's like it's the most mad thing I've ever seen, and that's going on now. But then, you know, you sit back in your in your little middle class bubble in your life, and you go around and go, "We die in a little studio." It doesn't really touch us. No. You, you're appalled, but you and you have a bit of an emotional connection to it, but actually you can't comprehend exactly yeah. what they what, what what they're going through. I think for me, for me, that's a shocking thing because it was the shoe was on the other foot, and that happened to us. Just how weird that would be, oh. and that they never thought that was going to happen. And, and and you know, I was the reason I asked that question is, I, as I said, I was in Florida. A Ukrainian driver, really nice guy. I said, "Where are you from, Ukraine?" I was like, "Fucking hell, mate! Sorry about that." And he goes, "Yeah, my funny is my best friend's Russian." And I said, "Well, what? How, are you still friends?" He goes, "Yeah, because he, you know, he's not in Russia, and he knows it's all bullshit, and he thinks Putin's an asshole, and this is all, you know, pretty clear." From their point of view, I don't think it. It's interesting how polarizing it is now because yeah. I don't think it matters whether they are on. If the Russians are on the Ukrainian side, I think they're done. Well, certainly for those lads, are like, no, that's it. You yeah. know, if you're Russian, get fucked. Yeah. Um, and you can feel the, almost the hatred coming off the thing. But I suppose when your country's been blown up and attacked, and your friends have been killed, and your family's been killed, and women have been killed, and sure, that will polarize you. Yeah. And you yeah. and you could see why. Um, I never really understood it with, you know, the uh, with things like the Vietnam War or Korea. Yeah. You know, you see these old veterans just still refusing point yeah. blank to to talk to anyone you know like talk to the Vietnamese didn't want to talk to them because they just they just can't get past the hatred you know, that's not going to heal for a long time and I think Russia you know put themselves into a position now where they're just it's, it's, there's no comeback from that and the fact that they're, they're propaganda and the only problem is that I saw a thing the other day with the uh, Xiaoping the uh, Chinese guy uh, president was yeah. with um, Xi Jinping Xi, Xi Jinping yeah, yeah and uh, was with um, Putin and they they, they translate they did lip read what he said and he said uh he said, we're going to change the world. He said something like, we're going to change the world like it hasn't been changed for 100 years. And they're like chumming up and handshaking. You're like, fucking hell. That is not a combination. Yeah. The world is in a very weird place. You just wouldn't think that, that people would invade stuff now. You just wouldn't think that would happen anymore. But it just goes to show anything happens. Yeah. Um, a different show from us this week, but I hope in, in some ways it's offered a perspective on on the global story right now that um, that we might not always see on BBC News or whatever it might be. And um, very best of luck to three very brave men and, and their, their uh, colleagues and, and friends, etc., as the battle continues. 
Um, it's always hard to segue from matters of war through to one of our sponsors, but <laughs> hey, that's the beauty of the good, the bad, yeah, the rugby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not one I've done very often, actually, either. Uh, but we are going to yeah. move on from back three... To, back to your funny sex uh, jokes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. funny <laughs> sex jokes. You, I love your idea about Anton and, and whether we could link him up I, with... I, um, look, I know it sounds like pie in the sky, but I, I, don't, I don't... It's the kind of thing, actually, that's a, you know, England needs a bit of a good that's news story. I mean. Let's get him over. Why and, would you not... Like, I don't think it would be that disruptive. You just oh. go, right, a couple of tickets. And, I mean, there yeah. are a few aren't short of a few, Bob. They've lost a bit, but... Couple of tickets, fly him over, give him a week, let Anton do a couple of training sessions with the, with the backs. Yeah. You know, just swap in and out, just see how it is. It's yeah. not going to affect anything. And um, Maxim gets to see what it's like as a top international. Yeah. Top international side. So. Well, I wouldn't say top. It's not really. They're not really a top international side. <laughs> <at the moment. laughs> probably, probably lose to Ukraine. But I think I that. think that'd be quite good. I think it'd be a good story. I, mean, I don't know if anyone's listening. Bill Sweeney, I know you're a big fan of the pod. Can you make it happen, sir? Yeah. Think of a different show then, but we won't go there. Um, the bit I loved is, can we do anything for the team? And he's like, yes, we need tanks yeah. and missiles <laughs> and uh, intelligence. I was going to make like, a joke. I'm not sure I can help I with that. I was going to make a joke about that. You've got a couple of blunderbusses and some muskets in the cupboard, <laughs> have you? I was like, I'm not really sure I can get, I can't really get you a tank, mate. No, how no. about how about a tackle bag <laughs> and some rugby balls? Let me pitch it. I was going to give you a, a rhino bit, scrum machine. Oh, yeah, I was going to give you a couple of GBR T-shirts and a couple of bibs and do a little celeb photo. Can, does that not? Yeah, well, that's but, yeah. But, I mean, good to know you're still big in the streets of <laughs> Kiev, though, isn't it? Imagine that. Yeah. I would declining actually, rep in Coventry, Northampton, yeah. Rico. Everyone. Do you wonder if I could? I would. I think I'd, would, would, would I. Would you be would up actually, for that? I'm, I'm glad you volunteered me I for would, the trip to Ukraine. I would 100% go tomorrow. Or is that madness? Or am I being really naive? Like. Well, it's only because Biden, Macron, <laughs> yeah. uh, Sunak, Haskell, yeah, all these that. world leaders going in to I... offer a morale-boosting visit. Somebody else did go, actually. Who was the other? Was I it Bear know. Grylls, I think, went for a... For a <laughs> might, he might He's got done, combat he? skills. Yeah, though, I know. So. Well, well, in reserve combat skills, isn't it? The reserve, what, so. what we've hopefully done by that additional minute is just soften the segue <laughs> between uh, the war in Ukraine and... Hey, Carl! Welcome <laughs> to you! <laughs> <laughs> as we bring in our greatest rugby <laughs> partnership <laughs> segment brought to you by our good friends at Haycar this week because we are picking the actually and obviously we've just had the current nine and ten from Ukraine's national team Anton um, and Vadim I'm not sure they're going to make the all-time greats but keep doing what you're doing fellas uh, we're going to be debating arguably the most important partnership within the game of rugby and that is the halfbacks there's going to be a lot of discussion points a lot of abuse a lot of opinion sent our way because we've whittled it down to a just a little handful of world-class halfback partnerships and actually we're then going to put this up on a poll on our social channels this Thursday where you can get involved and pick your favourite halfback partnership from the three contenders. No, it's not. It's the four contenders that we have picked out. So, do you want to go quickly through the four that we've got? Yes, I can. We have um, George Gregan and Stephen Larkham won the 99 World Cup, 2003 runners-up, 2001 Lions Series winners, 78 appearances together. Also remarkable Brumbies as well, actually. Yes. Beyond that. Matt Dawson and Johnny Wilkinson won the 2003 World Cup, three Six Nations, including one Grand Slam. Yep. Aaron Smith and Dan Carter won three rugby championships at two that and 2015 World Cup. Yeah. Barry John and Sir Gareth Edwards, 1971 Grand Slam and 1971 at Lions Series winner in New Zealand. Okay. I'm just trying to think off the back of that. So, Gregan and Larkham, Dawson and Wilkinson, Smith and Carter, and John and Edwards. I'm trying to think where people are going to scream at us because we haven't select them so i think what we've got there is well who would you think who with the real naws is going to mention something we've van der vestes and stransky yeah okay yeah. i think would be another van der one Vestes was amazing wasn't it? he was unreal howley and um uh, yeah well, i think you probably need the 10 as well yeah I'm not sure i think what you've probably got there is world champions plus so who have we not picked? And then Pollard and Faf de Klerk would probably be there. Yes, po yes, that's what they say. But I just... I, you know, do they think David Kirk and Grant Fox in 87. Yes. I tell you, people will um, shout about Far Jones and Liner as well. Yes. But I think I'm quite comfortable having gone yeah. through that. With I mean, the I'm comfortable ignoring anyone who complains about anything we do. Right. That's basically where my head's at. So if you want to complain, don't worry about it. But okay. that's, what we've <laughs> that's what we've chosen. Like it or lump it. Okay, do you remember watching Gregan and Larkham? Yes, I do. And your impressions of them well Gregan was one of my favorite scrum halves of all time really? um, because he obviously invented well created that play that running out to the side and you know little flick pass back in the doing yep. the great basic coin oh, yeah, you know, like, the, yes. like Matt Gidley had the out the back door offload 
Gregan had the Gregan ball. He was amazing. I think yeah. Larkham as well, the way he like drifted through yeah. space. You know, you know Bernie, because there was never much going on, but incredible. You know, weekend at Bernie's. Yes, yeah. It was, it was a bit like yeah, a dead did, man. He did, yeah. he did sort of look like, he did look a bit like a naughty schoolboy so yeah. sometimes. But I think, and also the very fact that Gregan used to um, just tackle anyone, yeah. you know what I mean, as well, which is amazing. He was remarkable. And I think both of them as well, they epitomized those tri nations. Yep. The, you know, the luminous um, Adidas ball playing in like night games against New Zealand and stuff. It's just amazing to watch. That's there, a real kind of nostalgic moment in time. Yeah. Dawson Wilkinson, obviously, in this part of the world, are going to get a lot of love and attention. Yeah. You obviously played with both remarkably different characters. When you're thinking about yin and yang, yes. remarkably different characters. Well, Yes, I think, but not too okay. Remarkable. Remarkably similar characters. No, no, I would, <laughs> no. They don't have to be. It's not too extreme. I'm it's just like, trying to think of Ying and Yang. No, I mean, Johnny was was well, perception was fiercely competitive, but kept himself to himself. And, and Matt sort of headed into the yeah, but, bright lights of the media. Yeah, and, but, he, but but I don't think. I mean, from what I know about Matt Dawson, he did, he wasn't like a crate. Like it wasn't having say me at nine and. Me at ten. Yes. No. No. We, we, no you're a bit loose. We, no. I'm trying to think who who would be like me at uh, nine and Wilkinson at like 10. Matt Tate or, or someone like that or Toby Flood at ten. You know, very polar opposite personalities. Okay. Do you know what right. I mean? Whereas I think Dawson was a complete. You know, extremely competitive. Um, you know, I remember he used to play for Northampton. He's one of the most annoying people. You know, always shouting at the ref, gesticulating and going and sort of. You know, but was an incredible player. You know that. I mean, again. I spent a lot of time running around the playground pretending to be Matt Dawson in that line. Oh, Dummy over the top in those yeah. moments, yeah. Um, We're talking combos, though. Uh, Smith and Carter. The, there is a bit of the Rolls, Ro Rolls Royce around Smith yes. and Carter. Yes, again, I just... Do you know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, I mean, look... I when mean, you put them up against the others, if you're, if you're putting them as cars... I, th I think they're unplayable, both of them. I, I, think, I think Aaron Smith on his day was just look I think oh, it, it's just so good like, but you know him and Greg are different again different Dawson's they're, they're all very different but I think in terms of like if you're going to choose one that was going to absolutely deliver with a, with a lightning pass yeah. speed um, but I do remember he was playing behind an all blacks pack as well which you know I mean, he helps it does help yeah but I think he was he was certainly amazing and Dan Carter I mean the bloke could do it all and he's unbelievably good looking yeah and he's cashed up to the eyeballs which may well swing the vote when and we're talking about greatest halfback pairings of all time. So I'm pretty much and and the much. trouble with Edwards and John is that we are we are we are bringing that in on folklore and if you had it another another hundred and one best tries, and the sort of black and white footage from the seventies. And there's absolutely no doubt that their credentials stack up. We're going on what we're told, not what we. That's saw. the problem. Yes, again, I, and I think the the, the issue yeah. is with. With every generation that goes past, you see the the old heads, the old rugby fans. They they dream of those no nostalgic days yeah. when you know when <laughs> I get it. I always make you smart, and I know this. I know um, older retired players always get funny because look, if if they were playing in, in today's, uh, you know, if Barry Johnson and Gareth Edwards were playing now, they'd be yeah. fitter, stronger, power. They would be the ultimate competitors, and they would probably would still be as good. I just always look back at those those nostalgic moments like you know the try for the end of the earth for the barbarians and honestly try from the end of the earth was france against oh Blacks. fine okay well, what's the what's the um, gareth edwards the greatest try ever scored fine, greatest yeah. try ever scored if you watch it it's like an under eight rugby game where yeah. all the, the defense run from one side to the other there's just space everywhere nobody's organized like you've got forwards like running off in different it's directions about three red cards in, yeah. in the yeah. 15 seconds of play and as it's well just utter, it's utter madness and it's like you know when defense was completely optional and, all, and people just like diving out the way. And one, one, I remember watching a 10. A 10 could run across, go dummy switch, dummy switch, dummy switch, and then score in the corner, and everyone would fall for it. Yeah. I reckon you'd get two paces, dummy switch someone, and just get disintegrated. Yes. Um, so I do find it hard to um, sort of reminisce those moments because the game is so different. Yes. But were they seminal talents? at that time, yes. Did they do stuff that other people couldn't do and were they light years ahead of like the footwork and the side steps and all those bits and pieces? 100%. I'm going to try and therefore distill the four that we've picked down into our winner and I'm going to discount Sir Gareth Edwards and Barry John. Not because I don't think they weren't unbelievable in parts of Wales, that, that's me done, but it's very hard to... I'll I tell you what we're going to do. Let's make it professional. Is this a late addendum? I'm allowed to do that? You can do what you want, mate. Professional partnerships. Because that's what we know. That's what we're going to pick. I think that does, therefore, remove Far Jones and Liner and the debate around it and the debate around Stransky and Van der Vestes. And so, Gregan and Larkham, 
Dawson and Wilkinson, Smith and Carter. And I'm going to knock out Gregan and Larkham because Wilkinson and Carter both had seminal moments in World Cup finals. And in fact, Dawson and Wilkinson combined for the Johnny drop. Smith and Carter took that game away from a very lively Wallaby outfit. Yes. So therefore, I'm going to give you the casting vote. It is your World Cup final. Which would you like as, ni as your 9 and 10? You've played with, played with or against all of them. Uh, 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 Smith and Carter. Because? Unbelievable players. Been there, done it at the World Cup. Did you play with Smith at the Highlanders? Yes. And? Uh, amazing. Um, he was, the year I played was the year he broke through. Oh. And he was, yeah, amazing. Great, real good professional. Really lovely guy. Very, he became one of my good friends, actually. We spent a lot of time together. I found a couple mm. of pictures of us going to a fancy dress thing the other day. A couple of Polaroids. I'm dressed like, I, I don't know, uh, charity shop and I got like shark's tooth trousers on a leather jacket moustache and a gold medal. we look like kind of like policemen we had a couple right. of, yeah, we look like it's literally we like wear on Tuesday night. normally isn't it like, <laughs> yeah I got dressed in the dark as per usual no and he um yeah he was mega and Dan Carter again I just think great player yeah good looking yeah loves the piss yeah load of cash yeah wins well cuts Johnny Wilkinson. So, so what I'm going to say therefore is, is that <laughs> Carter beats Wilkinson because he loves the piss more. No, because Car you Carter, can say all of those Carter about Wilkinson. Carter Wil beats Wilkinson because. Well, what you, you ask, just said you is Dan wins Carter, World Cups, yeah. world class player. Yeah, yeah, that's why he beats incredibly Wilkinson. good looking. Yeah, loads so of cash. Wilkinson, all of those could be Wilkinson. Wilkinson loves incredible. the piss. Carter no, wins it. No, well, also you know, there's two other bits to that. Wilkinson very good looking. Yeah. Right. Never really utilised it. Yeah. Which is disappointing in itself. Or with great you power comes, kept it out of the papers. Well, with great power comes great responsibility. I think he wasted it. <laughs> right. If you ask Dan Carter a question, you'll get an answer. If you ask Johnny Wilkinson a question, the incoherent psychobabble comes out that I, I, not anyone on this earth, apart from Brian Cox. Or is it Brian Cox? Who's the guy who does the, the space stuff? The yeah, one Brian he, Cox. There's just two of them. There's the actor Brian Cox. Yeah. And the other one, yeah. yeah. Cosmos. Professor Brian, Brian Cox. Cox, yeah. Yeah. Or only Do you him know he was in D-Ream? Yeah. That is unbelievable. I only uh, found out the other day. Either, either him or, or um, Stephen Hawkins are the only ones who can understand what Johnny Wilkinson is talking about. Right. That's quite hard. He doesn't go on the piss. Yeah. Trains too hard. Isn't sponsored by Louis Vuitton. Um, right. And that isn't showbiz, where Dan Carter is showbiz. Okay. And for me, that plus winning, well, he's won two World Cups. And um, Aaron Smith's great. I think you've justified it. Thank you. Aaron I mean, Smith I, yeah. and Dan Carter. What? Yeah, I mean, I do Dorsett, Matt Dorsett, you know, I love, but he's, you know, he's not really, he's a great player, lovely bloke, not really model material, do you know what I mean? It looks like a bit like the guy. Unless it's darkness. a hand, unless you're looking for a, ha a glove sponsor. Glove sponsor, glove yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, those gloves are great. I mean, you know, I, I even tried them back in the day, they just didn't work, so. Right. <laughs> no, nothing could help no, your hand. Nothing could help me. That's actually, a, you know, I've got to stop that narrative. I was very good at rugby. Yeah, we, that's true. We're building you oh, up. We <laughs> no, I'm not building me up. I just was very good at rugby, full stop. Let the abuse begin. Uh, we have gone with Smith and Carter as our greatest halfback pairing. Let us know who you would pick by heading to our poll on socials this Thursday, powered by Haycar, who make buying a car easier with their large range of quality checked used cars within a single app. Unlike the halfback pairing of Smith and Carter, who drove success on and off the field over what seemed like a decade and more. All Hay Car vehicles are under eight years old with less than 100,000 miles on the clock and they come with a warranty and 10-day money-back guarantee all at your fingertips. If you want to know more, download the Hay Car app to find your perfect car. Welcome along to a new friend of GB&R. It's good to have you with us. Do you reckon Hay Car give us, like you, me and Mike, a car, like the shittest car they've got? Yeah, we, we have well, they're drop. only dealing good cars, James. I know that. I know with that. under 100,000 100, miles on the I clock. Know, but they come with a warranty and 10-day money-back okay. guarantee. They don't do shit uh, cars. Uh, okay, fine. But, but they must have a... They <laughs> they're must at least have, a star car. Yeah, fine. But they must have a, a, a like a least shit good car. You know what I mean? A again, that's not what I mean, Paul. <laughs> no, they no, all no. come with less than 100,000 <laughs> no, miles on the clock. No, fine, and a warranty yeah, okay, and 10-day money-back guarantee. Okay. I don't think they do less uh, shit good cars. Okay, but well, hold on. It's not in the marketing material. They're all under eight years old, James. No, but hold on, hold on. Have another go. No, but hold on, hold on. Uh, they say under a hundred thousand, so you could have they one do. that's done ninety thousand miles. Than, yes. So it's not. So that's not. Beyond Still the not a shit car. It's a good car. Fine, with that's what I mean. Miles. A good, but like a good shitter car. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no shit cars. They're <laughs> all under eight years old, with less than a hundred thousand miles want, on the clock. A, and they come with a money back guarantee fine. and a warranty. I just want to drive their three worst best cars. No, again, they don't do those. They, I we, can't keep doing it. Just give us a car. Just give us a car. Give us a car. But then it's no fun if it's like a really good car, is it? 
Because that's all some... they do, James. They do really good cars <laughs> under eight years old with less than hundred thousand. Fine, miles. fine. Hey, cars not the right people to go to then. Right. Okay. Let's go and find somewhere else. Right. What was the back. point you were trying to make just about their good cars? Just give us a car and go on a road trip, and then we can retest really out the reliability right. of those cars. It'd be quite funny. Okay. You could have just said that without having to. Yeah, but I didn't want them to give us a really good car because then it was obviously. That's make what they it. do, James. They only do really good cars <laughs> under eight years old. Fine. <laughs> but it's the wrong people then. It's the wrong okay. people to talk to. Okay. So hey, the, what we want is a car from Hey Car and then to go on a road trip. Yeah, that's basically. Yeah, that's the upshot of it. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. But idea. then if you're going to do us a car, just give us the real best one you've got. Yeah. What? Well, yes. Download the Hey Car app to find your perfect car. We are cruising again, Hask. We are cruising again, Alex. Talking of the World Cup, we're under five months ago, and we'll be there on a cruise ship in the centre of Marseille, no less. This is an incredible opportunity. We've got two cruises, uh, and you want to find out all the information, you go to infinitysportstravel.com, where you can get tickets. 4,000 people on a liner. We'll be doing live shows. I'll be DJing. It is actually going to be unbelievably uh, good fun. I saw the plan of the boat the other day. I, There's the, a cigar, cigar bar. Uh, well, you told me about it. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about how cool that boat is and all the things we can do on it. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure four days is going to be enough, actually. Yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, but yeah. I mean, Chloe's already like, you know, make sure you behave. I was like, I will be. I'll be in the cigar lounge and, and you know, enjoy myself. So I'm very excited about that. Come along um, and you will not be disappointed. Um, and after that, we're always giving back to our fans. We're going on a World Cup after-party tour. We're back on the stage again. We are. Entertaining, bringing laughter and joy to the following places. Guildford, London, Swansea, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Northampton, Reading, Oxford, Leicester, Birmingham, Southend, Exeter, Plymouth, Newcastle, Nottingham, Manchester and Bath. And tickets are available at Ticketmaster. Search GBR. Good, bad, rugby. You've done that very nicely. Thank you. Yeah, like sort of Sophie Rayworth and a, a Hugh Edwards type gravitas Was that to, nice? your, Was to your it? promotional... Read my go now because there are still some tickets available. Would you believe for the Gallagher Premiership Rugby Final at Twickenham on the 27th of May? We obviously don't yet know who's in it, but they are all gunning to win it, and it's a great way to get to the HQ and experience what is going to be the showpiece of the domestic season here in England. An incredible atmosphere. We were there last year. We're there again this year. We love the Prem Final. It's sunny. It's going to be an amazing game. Um, occasion, etc. I know obviously you played in one. Do you have fond memories of the day, if not the result? I played in two and I won one and then I lost one. It's a great day, Alex, <laughs> the Premiership final. The sun is shining, hopefully. It's a great spectacle, cool atmosphere, yeah. lots, lots to do. Have a quiet pint in the sun. We've actually got a GBR show there that day as well. Yes. Well, you say you keep saying we. I'm I'm not there. Well, we as GBR. Yes. You're yes. Not, otherwise, it'd be just James Haskell's doing a show there. We as GBR well, are doing a show. What more We've got Ellis to. coming along actually. For Have that, you? As the current defending champion. Will he not be in the final? Well, I think Bristol are going to struggle too. But obviously, he oh shit, the pot with Bristol Leicester. Last I thought it was a Leicester. Yeah, he's only been there for a year, so don't <laughs> yeah, worry too much sorry. about that. Fingers Rule, on the buzzers, Zilf's please. On the pulse. If you do fancy a Premiership final ticket, and if you do fancy coming along to GBNR's show pre-match, we're going to have a, a beer or three and uh, and warm up for the day. Then come along, uh, and in order to get your tickets, go to eticketing.co.uk/premiershiprugby, where you can snap up a ticket or two. Uh, eticketing.co.uk forward slash premiership rugby see you there don't forget to subscribe to the show we've got a special extra show that comes out every week it's called the lock in it's available on apple soon to be available on spotify it is for our dedicated listeners the normal podcast which you're listening to now is free and will always remain free even though it's crammed with some you know commercialization but that's what keeps the lights on um and we don't do things for free especially not me but lock in for three pounds a month you get all the actual gossip, where we're unchecked, uncensored, to a certain degree. Even I'm censored a bit it, on that. It's basically just someone pressing record in and out of the various curious conversations that yes. we have when we're not sort of being given. I think this time we were told to do, well, this, this show, we were told to talk about favourite world destinations that we've been, and instead we covered AI, sex toys, the theories. end of world, and conspiracy yeah. theories. Yeah, I mean, that's just where we go. And, and I, it is very entertaining. It's, it's a reverent bollocks i would say but please reverend bollocks yeah reverend bollocks. please share please subscribe please find out more um enjoy it and as i said gbr hasn't been monetized so all those cretins who who panic go oh, i can't believe it you sold out I don't, i'm not going to pay to listen this will always be free um my go you'll go don't forget the good the scars and the rugby is back this week as well in partnership with vodafone all the latest from the women's game and actually do you know what just as an aside 
that show is beginning to absolutely pop. So if you're tuning in and you're leaving comments and you're giving the girls a bit of support, thank you very much indeed. These are unbelievably exciting times for the women's game. They've got a live show. They've got, obviously, you know, a Women's World Cup in a couple of years' time to look forward to. The Lionesses are on the way, and the Good Scouts and the Rugby is the place to be if you enjoy the women's game. It has been a very exciting few months for the women's game and for the pod as well. So tuck into that if you haven't already. That's it from us. It has been a very different show this week, and we do like to sort of try and stress test, I suppose, the game of rugby. I think chatting to two members of the Ukrainian national rugby team on all things much broader than what happens between the white lines has been certainly very enjoyable and very enlightening and, and rather humbling for us. So hopefully you've got a little something out of it as well. But that is it for the good, the bad and the rugby this week, produced by Shara Kilgallen and Ollie Hunter. And GBR is a Folding Pocket production. Back next week. See you then. Bye for now. Uh -huh.